How are you doing this morning, Taylor? Doing good. How are you? Doing great. Looks like you're the only person that's going to show up for right now, so that's okay. Uh, we're going to do some introduction to three phase circuits today. Uh, really just talking about um, kind of the jargon, uh, because that's what I think the students struggle the most with. So we're not going to actually analyze any circuits or really do a whole heck of a lot of math today. Uh, so it should be kind of light and breezy, or as light and breezy as this class gets. Sounds good. All right, let's get things situated here. So up to this point, everything that we've done in this class thought of as or at least in a steady state sinusoidal section as a single phase circuit. So let me explain what I mean by that. And we might have had more than one excitation source, but it would still be considered a single phase. So So in the frequency domain, for a single phase circuit, we would see that we have some phase voltage with an associated phase angle. We could break our system up into the source side over here on the left, the load side over here on the right, and then in the middle would be what we would consider transmission lines because they are delivering the power or energy from the source to the load. And we have in a single phase system, hot wire and a neutral wire, where the ground wire, as I believe I mentioned uh, previously when we were talking about effective values, isn't really a part of the system. Uh, and to start things off here, I'm actually using let me explain my notation transmission. I'm going to be using lowercase letters for the source side of things. So that's why I have this lowercase a up here. This is letting me know that it's the a terminal of the source size, source side. And this uppercase a over here is the a terminal of the load. Um, and similarly, lowercase n is for the neutral terminal of the source, and uppercase n is for the neutral terminal of the load. So this is the most bare bones single phase circuit that we could possibly have. Um, these transmission lines might have some impedance. The load may be significantly more complex looking than a single impedance, but generally speaking, this is what we can approximate most of our circuits as. On a three phase circuit, we're going to have something similar, um, but distinctly different. Let's call this VPA, VPB, angle theta B. VPC, angle theta C, A, B, C.
So we still have the same basic circuit fig uh, configuration. Source on one side, transmission lines in the middle, and load on the other side. Our source is wired in a very config uh, particular configuration and our load is also wired in a very particular configuration. Uh, and so our source side, this would be considered a three phase load. Um, and I'm trying to, or excuse me, three phase source. And um, I'm trying to think of a, a good way to, to really explain this because it's, it's a three phase source, but it's not because all of the three voltage source, well, I, I guess it is because all of the three voltage sources are connected together. Uh, it's just this in particular is what we would call a Y connected source because they all share a common point. Uh, and for a Delta connected source, they are inter interconnected in a different way. Um, so we have an A phase. So we're gonna have an A phase wire, a B phase. So a B phase transmission wire and a C phase. So a C phase uh, transmission line uh, as well. And our load has a similar configuration. Uh, so a very common question that I get asked is why would anyone ever use a three-phase system? It seems complicated. Um, but if you'll notice here, we actually only have one more wire than our previous system, but we can deliver three times the amount of power. Uh, so one of the most common arguments for using a three-phase distribution system like this is because it's significantly cheaper to transmit large amounts of power and energy, uh, especially considering over long distances and the, the things that we can do with transformers, which we won't really talk about in this class too terribly much. Um, another reason that we use three-phase systems is because we get a very specific rotating magnetic field out of a three-phase source. And that causes three-phase electrical machinery, like induction motors and things of that nature, to operate with the minimum amount of vibration. So it's the least costly means of operating uh, electrical machinery as well, because with the minimal amount of vibration, you get uh, less damage from heat losses and things like that, and less mechanical damage as the vibration uh, is minimized. Um, so let's take a minute to talk about how three-phase voltage is generated. Because this is going to help you understand why a three-phase voltage source behaves the way that it does. So we have an outer ring and this is called the stator uh, because it is stationary. And then it's got six poles to it. And these guys are supposed to be located physically 120 degrees apart. So that if we measured from So if we call this guy the A phase and this guy over here the B phase, this angle is supposed to be 120 degrees and the separation from the B phase and the C phase is 120 degrees and the separation from the C phase to the A phase is 120 degrees. Across from our A pole, we're going to have an A prime pole across from our B, we'll have a B prime, and across from our C, we'll have a C prime. And what we have actually happen here is that inside the rotor, or excuse me, inside the stator, there is a rotor. And it is a simple magnet with a north pole and a south pole and it rotates with an angular frequency of omega, where in this case, omega is counterclockwise. 
and we can run some wires off of this guy. And let's see. Trying to draw this in a way that's not too wild here. So all of the prime poles are tied together and they form a neutral connection. Actually, let me jump that over so it's more clear. Here is our C, here is our A. And here is our B. So this is going to give us the CN. This guy is going to give us B, BN. And we can also have a VAN that's between the A phase and the neutral phase out here. And so what will happen is that as the rotor spins inside of the stator, Magnetic flux through each of those poles, uh, it's a coil of wire, is going to change. And so when the north pole is aligned precisely with um, the A pole, the north pole of the rotor is aligned precisely with the A pole of the stator, we'll see that that voltage VAN is at its maximum. So the way that I've drawn it, this is effectively occurring at T is equal to zero. So I'm going to attempt to draw a sine wave here. And so that voltage is going to oscillate sinusoidally. Um, and the negative corresponds, so right here, this is corresponding to when the north pole is lined up precisely with the A prime pole. And for the B phase, let's do that in blue. Because the A phase and the B phase are located 120 degrees apart, we will see that in our waveform, um, the peaks of the A phase and B, uh, B phase are going to be located 120 degrees apart as well. So it'll be something like this. And finally, we'll see that the C phase is 120 degrees lagging the B phase. So let's see. It will be about here. And we'll have something like this. So we have V. AN as a function of time is going to be BPA cosine of omega t volts. VBN as a function of time is VPB cosine omega t minus 120 degrees volts. And lastly, these, sorry, these should not be ends. I'm getting ahead of myself here. The PA, the PB, the PC. 
Oh, no, I was right. Dang it. Sorry. B, P, C, cosine omega T minus 240 degrees volts. So this is what our three different voltage waveforms are going to look like. They are exactly 120 degrees out of phase with each other because that's the way that the generator is constructed. Um, so it's extraordinarily difficult to ever make the phase angles of um, a three phase voltage source ever not be 120 degrees out of phase because they're, again, physically built in a way to maintain that. Now, those coils for the A, A prime, B, B prime, and C, C prime poles of the stator, if they all have the exact same um, number of turns and size, then they're going to be identical uh, from an electrical perspective. And so what we'll see is that VAN is going to look like square root of 2 times the phase voltage cosine omega t blue vbn will be square root of 2 vp cosine omega t minus 120 degrees and vcn square root of 2 Vp cosine omega t minus 240 degrees. Um, so effectively all I'm really saying here, the change between what I have on the right hand side and what I have on the left hand side is that they're of identical magnitudes. And so in the RMS phaser domain, that means that VAN is simply what we're going to call the phase voltage Vp angle zero degrees, VBN is going to be VP angle negative 120 degrees, so it's lagging VAN by 120, and lastly we see that VCN is VP minus 240 degrees. These are what we're going to consider the voltages of the overwhelming majority of the circuits that we are going to analyze. Uh, the only time that we would ever see something different is when we have what's called a negative phase sequence. So up here we had omega rotating counterclockwise um, and so we can see that as the end pole of our magnet turns counterclockwise, um, it's going to go A, B, C, A, B, C as it rotates around and around and around. Well, if, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, that's what's called an A, B, C or positive phase sequence. <clears throat> and it generates these three voltages that I've outlined in purple. If instead omega were clockwise, it would go A, C, B, A, C, B, or C, B, A, C, B, A over and over and over again. And that's what we call a negative phase sequence. And so the only difference between the positive phase sequence and the negative phase sequence, I'll write it down here. Omega is C, C, W. We have VAN is VP angle zero degrees. VBN is VP angle negative 120 degrees. And VCN is VP angle negative 240 degrees. And a negative phase sequence generator. where omega is clockwise, 
we just have VAN is still VP angle zero degrees. VBN now leads VAN by 120 degrees. And similarly, VCN leads VBN by 120 degrees. So we get positive 240 here. So they're identical in every way except the sign on the phase angle. Um, the reason why you might have a negative phase sequence generator is because you don't want all of your electrical machines to rotate counterclockwise. So if you have a negative phase sequence, it causes um, the rotor to rotate clockwise, um, which means if you connect it to a motor, that motor is also going to rotate clockwise. So that's really the only reason. It's positive phase sequence for counterclockwise rotation, negative phase sequence for clockwise rotation. Um, all right, so before we jump into source and load configurations, do you have any questions about what we've talked about thus far? No, not right now. Cool deal. All right. Um, so there are um, two different ways that we can connect a source and two different ways that we can connect a load. So there's effectively only four different permutations of circuits that we can have in this section of the class. Um, the math is going to get um, really rough looking until we make some observations. Then it's going to become almost trivial um, for us to do. Uh, the biggest issue, again, that I see students struggling with is understanding the terminology. So that's why I'm going to spend some time here going over exactly what things are. Um, so. The first thing that we're going to start with is what's called a Y connected source. And there's a couple of different ways that we can draw them. I'll draw the way that's most conventionally used in textbooks, which I actually don't care for. First, So this is A, B, and C. This middle connection point is our neutral N. And one thing that I want to point out here um, that's pretty important is that not all Y connected sources have to have a neutral wire. So we can consider this guy to be optional. Um, but if the A, B, and C phases are tied together at a common point like this, like the example that I had above, that would be considered to be a Y connected source. So the voltage across this guy is going to be VAN, the voltage across this guy will be VBN, and the voltage across this guy will be VCN. Um, all right, now I'm going to redraw it in a way that's the way that I prefer to see them, which is, I believe, how I drew it up there. So here's A, B, C, and down here, we'll sneak in our neutral. And so this is V, A, N, V, 
Bn and Bcn. All right, so here's where the terminology is going to come in. Um, the first thing that we are going to discuss, uh, discuss is um, the concept of a phase voltage, okay? And a phase voltage is defined as the voltage drop over one phase of a source or a load. So in this case, our phase voltages are simply going to be VAN, VBN, and VCN. Hopefully that's fairly straightforward, right? Um, so it's the voltage drop over one phase where one phase is defined to be say between the B and the neutral or the A and the neutral or the C and the neutral. It's between one of the terminals and the point of interconnection on the source. Um, then we have what are called line voltages. And line voltages are the voltage drops between the transmission line terminals. of a source or load. So, let me use a different color here. Let's choose green. So this voltage VAB would be considered a line voltage because it's measured not across the source, but across the, the uh, transmission line terminals. Uh, on this guy, we can maybe see a little bit more easily. This is going to be VAB. This is going to be VBC. And if we measure from here to here, this is our line voltage VCA. And all of those measurements are ignoring the presence of a neutral, right? They're only between the transmission line terminals um, of the A phase, B phase, and C phase transmission line terminals. So we can see that our line voltages are VAB, VBC, and VCA. And um, maybe I haven't mentioned this yet, but I'm using a double subscript notation. So VBC means that the B terminal is the positive polarity terminal and C terminal is the negative polarity terminal. So it's a V positive polarity terminal, negative polarity terminal is the, the nomenclature I'm using, whether it's line voltage, phase voltage, et cetera. Um, so that's what that double subscript notation means. Uh, then I have uh, phase currents that we can talk about. So a phase current is simply the current through one phase of a source or load. So I'm going to define my phase currents to always be in a direction such that we're going to have absorbed power. So that means I can have a phase current like so, and this would be I A N or a phase current like so, which would be I B N or a phase current like so, which would be I C N. I can draw them up here too. I A N. IBN and ICN. Um, there's also 
Oh, well, let's write those down. Uh, there's also a concept which is called the line currents. And we actually can't see line currents on our source. Uh, and the reason is, is the line current is the current that flows through a transmission line. from source to load. So we can only observe and label line currents when we have a full system. Load. Um, so I'm just going ahead and defining it now, but we can't actually draw them um, anywhere. All right, so those are the four different quantities that we're gonna be looking at. Phase voltages, line voltages, phase currents, and line currents. And this is a, uh, how they appear on a Y-connected source. So before we move on to delta-connected sources, do you have any questions? No. All righty. So Wait, can you, just, or can you actually just go back to line current and finish writing that definition? Sure. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. No problem. All righty. So next we're going to talk about delta connected sources. Um, all right, let's see. A, this will be B, this will be C. Um, so here are three uh, terminals that would connect to our transmission line. So this voltage is going to be VAB. This voltage is going to be VBC. And this voltage is going to be VCA. And if we wanted to redraw this in a form that's a little less, in my opinion, wonky looking, This guy is VAB, VBC, and finally VCA. So these are our different ways that we can draw delta connected sources. Um, and a delta connected source does not have a neutral wire ever. Um, there's nowhere to put it. Uh, because instead of sharing a common point of interconnection, uh, instead we effectively have uh, a series connection of um, voltage sources. 
Um, everything's still going to be 120 degrees out of phase if it's balanced and all that kind of stuff. It's just a different way to connect things. Um, okay. So now we're going to get into some uh, terminology stuff again. So the phase voltages. Any idea what these might be based on our definition above that a phase voltage is just the voltage drop over one phase of a source? Sorry, I was copying. Can you repeat the question? Sure. So any idea what our phase voltages might be given that a phase voltage is defined to be the voltage drop over a, a one phase of a source? Oh, the voltage drop between the terminals A and B on the right side schematic. So um, VAB, VBC, and VCA, all of, so effectively every time the voltage is given over the, the voltage source symbol, those are going to be our phase voltages 100% of the time by definition, right? Because they are defining the voltage drop over one phase. Um, so we'll have VAB, VBC, and VCA. Now our line voltages, are by definition the voltage drops seen when we measure between the transmission lines. So I think I did those in green. So what would I label this voltage that I put the plus and minus sign on on the right hand side schematic? How would I label that? The sub A, B. Right. And then this guy would be the BC, and we could have VCA. And those are identical to the phase voltages. So VAB, VBC, and VCA. So for a delta connected source, the phase voltages and the line voltages are representing the exact same quantities. Uh, and that's something that a lot of students, that this is where things get a little bit hairy, right? So before we saw that the phase, uh, in, a, in a Y connected source, if you look up here, the phase voltages VAN, VBN, and VCN represented entirely different quantities than our line voltages VAB, VBC, and VCA. But here in our delta connected system, they represent the same thing. So this is why it's important to fundamentally understand what the definition between a phase voltage is and a line voltage. Phase voltage is the voltage drop over one phase of a source. A line voltage is the voltage drop between the transmission line terminals of the source. So they can represent the same things in particular configurations. Um, all right, so phase current here. Um, that's going to be the current that flows through each phase, uh, causing the phase to absorb positive power. So this would be our phase current IAB. This would be our phase current IBC. And this would be our phase current ICA. And um, again, because we can't label the line currents, uh, we're not going to really talk about them here just yet, but the line currents would still be the current flowing um, through the transmission line from the source side to the load side. All right, so that is a delta connected source. So we have our two different ways that we can connect a source. The next thing we're going to talk about is the two different ways that we can connect a load. So let's look at a delta, or excuse me, a Y connected loads. And I could draw these as um, 
where it literally looks like a Y, but I'm, I'm gonna skip that stuff because I don't really much care for it. Um, so for a Y connected load, it's gonna look like the one in my original example. So we're gonna have an A phase of the load. B phase of the load. And a C phase of the load. And also potentially a neutral. Uh, and I'm going to use uppercase letters for my terminals here because I'm on the load side. So our phase voltages will be the AN. BN and I'll sneak this one up here. The CN. Our line voltages are going to be the AB. VC and VCA. And finally, our phase currents are going to be I, AN, IBN. I C N. All righty, and we can get those again just using our basic definitions. So. Uh, the reason why VAN is a phase voltage is because it's a voltage measured between the A phase and the neutral. The reason why VAB is a line voltage is because it's measured from the terminal A of the transmission line to terminal B of the transmission line. And the reason that uh, IAN is a phase current is it's flowing through one phase of our load. So hopefully uh, all that stuff makes uh, sense. Any questions before we move on to delta connected loads? Oh, that makes sense. Okay, good. Um, last page here. Delta connected load. Uh, so let's put the A phase here. This makes this guy Z delta A, Z delta B, and Z delta C. And our phase voltages are going to be the AB, the BC. CA. Our line voltages should be pretty. Uh, 
obvious, but they're also going to be VAB, VBC, and VCA. So whether we have a delta connected source or a delta connected load, the line voltages and the phase voltages are equal. And lastly, we will have our phase current to deal with. Which will be IAB, IBC, and ICA. Um, so now we've talked about the two different ways that we can connect our loads. So the last thing that we're going to talk about today will take uh, two minutes tops. And I just want to be clear uh, about something because I get questions about this that um, I, I honestly don't understand why, but whatever. Um, so there are four different configurations that we can have. Y, Y. Y, Delta. Delta Y and Delta Delta. So this means for a Y Y, we have a Y source connected to a Y load. Y Delta means we have a Y source connected to a Delta load. Delta Y means that we have a Delta source connected to a Y load. And delta delta means we have a delta source connected to a delta load. So those are the four different types of circuits that we are going to have to be able to analyze. And uh, on tomorrow morning, we're going to start by looking at a YY source. Uh, and we're going to work it not necessarily in the hardest way possible, but in a very generalized way. Um, so that we can make a lot of observations about the behavior. Uh, and then we're going to learn a simplified method um, to analyze that, uh, which will be the building block on which we analyze all other three phase circuits. Um, okay, so it's about 50 minutes talking about stuff. Uh, thank you for being the only person to show up today, Taylor. Um, you got any questions? Uh, no, no, I don't. All righty. Well, um, like I said earlier, you know, no math or anything really today. So there's not going to be a homework assignment for this. It's just we're trying to lay a strong foundation so that when we get into the complicatedness of a, analyzing a three phase circuit, you'll at least have some idea of what I'm talking about. Sounds good, sir. All right. You have a great uh, rest of your day and I will catch you uh, tomorrow morning. Thank you. You too.